Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel. In this tutorial, we explain the basics of smart pointers in C++. In particular, we focus on the smart pointer called Unique PTR, and this is the first part of the tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, we will explain how to use this pointer for simple data types such as integers, floats, etc. And in the second part of this tutorial, we will explain how to use the smart pointer in the case of classes. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. First of all, this tutorial is very, very, very important for proper understanding of modern C++ language. Secondly, this tutorial is very important for robotics and mechatronics engineers who are coding in robot operating system. Let's start. First of all, let's explain the need for smart pointers. And to do that, we will consider two motivating examples. Here's the first example. Let us assume that we have created a dynamic array during the runtime. We can do it like this. First, we declare a pointer to an integer data type, and then we say p is equal to new int 50,000. This will create an array of 50,000 integer variables on the free storage or on the heap storage, and it will return an address to the first entry of the array and store it in P. That is, this pointer P will contain the address of the base element or the first element of this dynamically allocated array. Then. Let us assume that we wrote some code after these two statements and that we forgot to release the memory by calling delete. That is, this line doesn't exist. This will create a memory leak and a bug that can further create other issues and instabilities with our code. Here's the second motivating example. Let us assume that we wrote this function. This function is nothing special. Over here, again, we declare a pointer to the integer and we create a dynamic array and then after that we write some code. Then over here we have the safeguard, that is, if some exception error occurs, for example, if we divide with zero, we will throw an exception and this exception will be handled somewhere else. Now. After that, we write some code at the end of the function we call delete to release the memory. So what is the issue with this code? If exception error becomes 1, that is if exception occurs, we will throw the exception and this delete statement will never be executed. And this will create a memory leak and a problem. Analyze this example and try to understand it properly. It's very important. So how to solve these problems? The solution to these problems is to use smart pointers. Smart pointers are used to automatically destroy an object or a dynamic array they point to and to automatically release or deallocate the used memory when smart pointers go out of the scope. By using smart pointers, we do not need to use the delete statement or to manually release the memory. And this will be performed automatically. This is very, very important. That is, smart pointers are used to automatically manage the memory and to release the memory once an object or a pointer or something else goes out of the scope. There, there are at least three smart pointers. They are unique PTR, shared PTR, and weak PTR. In this tutorial, we explain unique PTR. As we will illustrate through an example, the smart pointer, unique pointer, is actually a class template that is declared on the stack. It is initialized by using an ordinary pointer that points to an object that is created on the heap space or on the free storage. In other words, 
the smart pointer, unique pointer, owns another object through an ordinary pointer and destroys that object once unique pointer goes out of the scope. And let's explain this through an example. Here is a minimal statement explaining how to define and use unique pointer. First of all, we need to include input-output stream since we will be printing some output. Then, we need to include this header file memory. Namely, you need to use memory since unique pointer as well as other smart pointers are defined in this header. Here is our main function and over here we declare and initialize our unique pointer. The declaration goes like this. First of all, we are saying that unique pointer will point to the data type int. And notice over here immediately that this is actually a template class. And always keep in mind, unique pointer is not actually an ordinary pointer, it's actually a template class. Then, over here we give the name to our pointer. And over here we initialize two things. First of all, we initialize the value and we initialize the address. And let's explain this. This statement will actually create a variable on the heap or on the free storage. Then, it will store number 10 at that variable and it will return the address of that variable. And this address will be stored in the pointer of our unique pointer. That is, our unique pointer contains another ordinary pointer that will point to this address, that is, to the address on the heap returned by new int. After this statement, that is, after we declare and initialize our unique pointer, we can use unique pointer as an ordinary pointer. Namely, over here we will print the value and we will simply use this div reference operator. Now, since our unique pointer called int ptr is not actually a pointer, we have overloaded this operator. That is, behind the scenes, in the implementation of unique pointer, the star operator is actually overloaded, such that when you write something like this, you can use it in the same manner as using ordinary pointers. And this is very important. And after that, we return zero and that's it. So let's compile and run this code. And let's see what's happening. What is the output? You can see over here that the value is 10. And that's precisely the value of the variable that exists on the heap. Now, notice another thing over here is that we don't call the delete statement over here. And this is very important. Now, let's summarize everything we explained. Our smart pointer, unique pointer, is responsible for deleting the memory that its ordinary pointer points to. Keep in mind that this smart pointer is actually a class or a template class to be more precise with its member functions. Now, we didn't use any of the member functions and we will not use them in this tutorial, however, our pointer, unique pointer, that is our smart pointer, also has some functions. And we can, for example, write unique pointer dot something. And we can call a member function. To summarize, our unique pointer is not an ordinary or classical C++ pointer, although it acts like this. Then, our smart pointer contains a destructor which calls delete. The smart pointer is declared on the stack and consequently its destructor is automatically called when the pointer goes out of the scope and delete is automatically called. This happens even if an exception occurs. Then smart pointers are declared in the header file memory and consequently we need to include memory. Now the question is how to create unique pointer and we partially answered this question. There are actually two approaches. 
This first approach is explained. And let's go over once again over this approach since most of the students do not understand first time when we explain something. Over here we need input-output stream since we are using Cout. Then we need to include memory since we need to include this header file because it defines our smart pointers. Here's our main function. Over here we declare and initialize our smart pointer. We can see that we need to specify the data type the smart pointer will point to and over here we give the name. We initialize it like this. We call new int 10. This will create a variable on the free storage or on the heap space and it will store 10 in that variable and it will return the address of that variable. That variable will be stored in the ordinary pointer of our unique pointer and that's it. Then, if we want to print the value, we will simply use the dereference operator int pointer and this will print the value. That's it. Simple as that. And again, we are not calling delete over here. This first approach is based on using new to allocate memory, as you can see over here. However, this might be an obsolete approach. There is a more suitable or better to say a recommended or suggested approach. The second approach is to use STD make unique. And the idea is almost the same. Here is the declaration and initialization. Instead of using new, we simply type make unique, we specify a data type and we specify the value. And this, that's it. Now, this template make unique is actually introduced in C++ 14 standard. And you have to make sure that you, you activate it and that your compiler supports C++ 14. And without this, you might get some compilation error. Its use is recommended over the new operator for creating smart pointers. Instead of using this line over here, we can also use this line over here. So let's see how this works in C++. Here is the implementation. Again, over here, instead of using new, we simply say make unique, we specify the data, data type and we specify the value. And let's execute this and let's see how it behaves. And it also behaves identically. You can see that the value is 10. Just ignore these after these artifacts created by the compiler. It works perfectly. Let me do it again. Hopefully I will not see these artifacts. Yes. So here is the value. Good. Now, there is even a third approach. And there is even a less verbose approach. The less verbose approach is actually to write this. Instead of this, we can simply write auto, right? And this is the power of newer C++ standards. Now, what will happen behind the scenes? Based on this statement over here, the compiler will recognize that we want to create actually a unique pointer and that this pointer should be pointing to integers. And that's why we can use this auto to simply make the code less dense. And let's execute this and let's see what will happen. And again, let's compile this and we can see that it works. The value is 10. Simple as that. Here are some very important things to keep in mind and that we will clarify in our future tutorials. First of all, the smart pointer, unique pointer, exclusively owns the object it points to. It is the only smart pointer allowed to manage the allocated memory. This is why it's called unique, because it owns the object. This smart pointer cannot be copied and it does not have a copy constructor. This means that these statements over here are not allowed. So let's analyze these statements. Over here, we declare and initialize our smart pointer. Then we print the value. 
And over here, we declare a unique pointer called int pointer2. Now, you can actually write something like this, and this seems logical. However, this is not allowed. Why it's not allowed? It's not allowed because we are using this equality operator, and behind the scene, there is a copy constructor that's being called. If this would be executed, then integer pointer 2 will also point to the same object as integer pointer, and this is not allowed and you will get the compilation error. Then, if you try to work or to write something like this, where you're going to declare another pointer called integer pointer 3 and initialize it with integer pointer, this will not work also. Why? Because if this succeeds, then also integer pointer 3 will point to the same object as integer pointer and this is not allowed by the definition because integer pointer should uniquely or exclusively own the object and manage its memory space. Okay, that's all for today and thanks for watching.